G'day guys, welcome back. My name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show. And yes, everybody knows the greatest super rugby team in New Zealand is the Hurricanes. And boy, six wins in a row for the Hurricanes. It's looking pretty good for the season. Absolute dominant performance tonight over the Highlanders, 47 points to 12. I will be celebrating if it wasn't for the, um, yeah, for the fact that this game was overshadowed by the injury to Cameron Roygaard. Boy, Roy Gard is um, the most exciting prospect going into the All Blacks this year. And he had his debut, I think, against the Springboks in, in the Walmart match for the Qatar Airway MBS Saudi Oil Money Cup, right? He was the only one that was able to score a try in that game against the Springboks. And uh, yeah, he, according to the commentators, he is currently the top performer out of the entire competition right now. And uh, he suffered a knee injury. So it could be, it looked like it could be either a dislocated kneecap or an ACL. If he was, if he was a dislocated kneecap, he could be out for six to eight weeks. If it was an ACL injury, unless he's somehow related to Sia Khaleesi, who managed to come back in four months in record superhuman time, he will be out anywhere from six to eight months and sometimes even longer. And with the knee injuries, you just never know. Gareth Anscombe had a knee injury and he was out for like, like what, almost two years? Uh, definitely over a year. Charles Olivon as well, knee injury for the, the friend, former French captain, out for over a year to a knee injury. And I, I really pray to God that Roy Guard is not going to be out for a year. Because that will be a travesty and a tragedy worthy of Shakespeare. That's, it's, uh, it's, it's just so disappointing to see that. And this actually happened as a result of a referee bump. Damon Murphy was partially responsible for this injury. And I think Super Rugby really needs to th rethink about the way they want the referee to just constantly speed the game up and overlook issues so that the game will keep going. And, you know, the law states very clearly if a player bumps into the referee and that had given... One team, either team, an advantage. The game should be stopped. A scrum will be called. But Super Rugby, oh, let's, <laughs> God forbid, let's not call for a scrum. Roy got bumped into Damon Murphy. And he basically was put into a really awkward position. He was trying to spun out of the bump or whatever. And got caught from behind. Rolled his knee. When the referee should have just called a scrum right away after it was bumped into. And clearly has obstructed his movement. And given the Highlanders an advantage. But nah, nah. This is Super Rugby, guys. We're going to speed the game up. F fuck that. <laughs> God forbid we'll have another scrum. Just play on. And Roy Gallo's caught in the awkward position. And had himself injured. Seriously. The governing bodies need to have a look at themselves. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And so, yeah, hopefully he's going to be okay. Hopefully it's just uh, six to eight weeks, not eight months to a year. And uh, yeah, it's disappointing. But that aside, I thought the rest of the Hurricanes team played extremely well once again. The set piece looked good. The scrummaging, absolutely dominant. Uh, multiple tight heads was one from the absolute spectacular work from both the starting and the reserve scrums uh, props coming off the bench. Jordy Barrett looked so good on the field, uh, doing a lot of the playmaking out of the 12 jersey, some razzle-dazzle <laughs> um, flick passes, uh, looking incredibly good. Uh, what really, really got me excited watching this Hurricanes team is what the decision-making uh, to just not kick penalty goals and go for those tries, be adventurous, especially at halftime. The only team that I've seen do this um, well, not only team, but the 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 the, 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 the winning like mentality from the team really showed at halftime for the Hurricanes. You know, they had a penalty inside their own twenty-two under the palms. Could easily just kicked it out and you know going out for some oranges. No, they tried to run the ball out of their own twenty-two. Ended up uh with a with a penalty on the halfway mark, which. You know, a lot of teams would be extremely happy, especially with Jordy Barrett. Could easily kick that through for a three points right on the halfway mark. 
The Hurricane said, nah, we're going to go for the try. They kicked the boy out and went for and, and, and went for another attempt for their set piece. Uh, it did not pay out. It did not get the try that they were looking for. But man, that is the championship quality that really, really got me excited. I was just like so pumped in the halftime break. Couldn't wait for the second half to start. And that is like rugby. That is good rugby that we wanted to see, right? Like I think the last time I saw this, I'm sure it's not last time I, I saw this, was the Springboks doing this. Uh, but the Springboks was just looking for a penalty. Springboks just want to go for the more, get a penalty and get some sort some points on the ball. Hurricanes took it one step further. Got the penalty. Kick a ball for Jordy Barrett. Easily kick a ball on the halfway. Mid, mid, you know, middle of the park, half on the on the 50 meter mark. Easily kick a ball. But nah, went for the tries after that. Boy, I was that was really, really, really um I was really excited for that decision. Also, uh, the, uh, the 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 just the, the tackling, the rush defense uh, was so good. They forced so many errors out of the Highlanders. Reese Patchell, right? Apparently, he's no longer a Brit. He's back being Welsh again. And he threw three intercepts. Three intercepts, including an intercept try. Okay? So, uh, and then he failed to find touch and just dropping ball from left and right from the high ball due to just the pressure that's been put onto him from the Hurricanes. Yeah, three intercepts from Reese Patchell. Obviously, Hurricanes did the homework, like, study the, the style that he liked to play. But, man, that's just pressure. Pressure from him to, to, to you know, to make those decisions and to, to get those intercepts uh, was quite, just just shows the, 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 the you know, the, the high work rate that Hurricanes put into this game. The Highlanders' scrum didn't work. The line-out set piece wasn't working either. A, a number of line-out losses. The tackling was not that great either. And, yeah, overall... Um, I think overall, it kind of all started from Patchung really not executing a lot of those stuff that they, that they clinically, and they just kind of trickle down to the team. A lot of the times, the, the Highlanders were just looking at each other, who, like, backs were doing the cleanouts, and forwards was playing at a 10, and Reese Patchung was not able to find options, uh, and it was very, quite a big mess out there for the Highlanders. So yeah, let's have a look at the match stats for this game. Two tries to the Highlanders, to, uh, to the Hurricanes, seven. Seven? Was it seven tries? Yeah, seven tries to the Hurricanes. 885 run meters to 656. Um, absolutely just incredible performance. 18 turnovers conceded against both teams. 117 tackles made. 41 missed tackles. That's almost 40% missed tackles from the uh, from the Highlanders. Yeah, Hurricanes, 155 tackles made. 20 missed tackles. A little bit on the high end, but it's not too bad. Still, still a pass mark, I reckon. Uh, kicks in play, 21 for the Highlanders, 27 for the for the Hurricanes. One missed kicks for both teams, but the Hurricanes has six. Whereas the Highlanders, Gilbert, pretty sure he hit the goalpost again, did he? Uh, or was that the Hurricanes that hit the goalpost? There was one ball hit the goalpost. Gilbert has to be the king at hitting, hitting the goalpost. You know, I was talking about Carter Gordon. Carter Gordon being the best guy at hitting the goalpost. Gilbert was like, nah, nah. I'll, I'll hold my beer, Carter Gordon. I'll show you how to hit the go post twice every game, right? So, I, I, I don't know. Let me know if you actually hit the go post. I can't actually remember if he hit the go post uh, from the conversions. But I know there was one guy, one boy that hit the go post. But I, I think that was Hurricanes that did it, though. Lineouts, four for the um, for the Highlanders. Lost for the Highlanders out of 13. One loss for the Hurricanes uh, out of nine. There was two scrum loss, just pure pressure from the Hurricanes. Um, it was, yeah, really, really ugly. Penalty count. This is probably the one thing the Hurricanes need to look at themselves a little bit better. Nine against the Highlanders, 15 against the Hurricanes. Yeah, a little bit on the high end to get that down to maybe below 10. Despite this, there were scrum penalties as well against the Highlanders. So if you're taking the scrum penalties out, the Highlanders' um, penalty count was even lower. There was one yellow card against the Highlanders early in the game to just cynical, like killing the ball at the breakdown, right in front of the try line. Uh, yeah, no option but a yellow card for that. So yeah, let's quickly go through some of the key moments, the scoring of the game. So nine minutes into the game, uh, like I said, there was a penalty against, who was it that got a, God, I think it was, uh, um, yeah, I think it was one, well, I think it was number 14, I can't remember, but one of the Highlanders uh, players, uh, but the, yeah, the Hurricanes made a nice break. It was like five minutes short on the trial line. One of the Highlanders players just like jumped onto the ball and killed it off. No, 
no option. Referee, yellow card, cynical. Um, so yeah, then with a the player advantage, Hollanders win for the line out, win, win for the uh win for the one for the um I think they went for the scrum option actually. But anyway, they just pounded on the pressure. A uh, big left dr leg drive from Numia pumps himself over for the first try for the Hurricanes. And after this, the Highlanders was walking back slowly to halfway. It's literally 10 minutes into the game, and the Highlanders are already trying to run the clock down because they had a yellow card. And at that point, I already knew this game was lost. If you walk into the game and you with that attitude to just try to run the clock down because you had to play in the bin, you already lost. You already lost. Um, so yeah, they try to walk back really slowly to run the clock down. Absolutely disgraceful. Uh, 17 minutes into the game, Hurricanes gets their second try on the ball. There was a nice turnover for the Hurricanes. And then the uh, the number seven, Sia Khaleesi, doppelganger, like La uh, Lakai, uh, just linked up with his support players. The ball kind of went back and forth between two players. But Lakai eventually got the ball back. Try time. S uh, what is it? 14 points to nail 17 minutes into the game. 27 minutes of the game, Hurricanes had more penalties. Kicked the boy off for a line out more. And then, um, yeah, beautifully executed. Amora held, uh, you know, held the ball, waited for his time, and then just crashed through for the third try. 21 points to nil, 27 minutes into the game. Um, 30 minutes into the game, the from the kickoff, Ruben Love just put the foot down and ran like 50 meters down the field, uh, linked up with his teammates, and then eventually the Hurricanes got into the 22 few quick crash balls, and eventually Cameron Roy got picked up the ball. Dummy and go, try time. 26 points to nil, uh, 30 minutes into the game. And the... Um, yeah, accuracy was really bad from the Highlanders at this point. Reese Patchen was throwing intercept passes left and right. Uh, 36 minutes into the game, Ethan Dispenser... Sorry, Ethan DeGroo tried a Carlos Spencer pass <laughs> between his legs. <laughs> Went to nobody. <laughs> that was the best play from the Highlanders for the entire game. Ethan DeGroo doing a Carlos Spencer <laughs> in the middle of the field. Oh, that was good. Oh, that was good. I had to go back and watch the Carlos Spencer pass. Man, that was incredible. Ah, oh, good nostalgic memories from that. And uh, 39 minutes into the game, Highlanders finally had a property one opportunity to score a try into... The Hurricanes 22 with the penalty line out throat not straight. Um, and then, like I said, just before half time, Hur Hur Hurricanes could have just exited, kicked the boy out for 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 exit. No, they pushed for it. They got a penalty on the 50 meter mark. Could have just kicked the three points. Jordi Barrett could easily kick 50. Not going full again, but didn't turn out into any points. But I I was just I was so respect respecting that decision to to go from that. Ah, uh, second. Uh, second half started immediately. Reese Patchell threw an intercept to, uh, yeah, Morby. Uh, ran 50 meters down the field. Try time freebie. 33 points to nil. Four minutes later, finally the Highlanders was able to build a little bit of pressure. Uh, got some penalties. Got one for the line out. The more didn't go well, but just pick and dry, pick and dry, pick and dry. Eventually they got really close to try line, and then. Fakatava picked up the ball and said, Roy Guard, I can do what you can do too. Dummy and go, try time. 33 points to the seven. Uh, 57 minutes in, that's when the unfortunate Roy Guard injury occurred. Uh, 65 minutes into the game, the hurt more penalties against the Highlanders from Scrum. Hur Hurricanes built back into the Hurricanes, uh, sorry, built into the Highlanders 22 with the penalties. And then, um, yeah, they... They had a, there was a, I think it was a knock on, and then there was a, uh, a Hurricanes feed inside the 22. The ball went out, uh, the number eight popped the ball straight to TJ Piranara, and TJ, TJ looked around, looked like he was going to pass, and then just dumbing went through, scored his 60, 60th try for the Hurricanes, seven points to 40. And uh, yeah, 76 minutes into the game, there was, you know, um, what happened here? Oh, yeah, it looked like Hernandez scored here, 76. Uh, one of the players crashed over the trial line. Looked like it was held up. Uh, and then the... Yeah, and then the uh, one of his teammates came up and just, like, rammed the ball down from, from on top of the chairs. Yeah, so, yeah. Nibkins, yeah, just got rammed it through. And then uh, the referee initially said no try, held up. And then the TM will show that the ball was actually, like, pushed down. 
uh, from his teammates. So try time for the ha Hollanders, 75 minutes. Uh, immediately after this try was scored, it looked like Fale uh, Faga scored a try uh, with some beautiful soccer skills. So there was a, a, a kickoff essentially, and then like it looked like TJ Pierre had knocked the ball on. But um, Fale uh, Faga also had a hand on the ball. So the ball was just like bouncing, bouncing on the ground. And uh, it was kicked through by Fale Faga. And then kicked through again. <laughs> just a bit of soccer skills. And eventually he got there at the end. Dot the ball down. And it was no try because he had a hand on the ball before this whole sequence. And uh, yeah. And finally the uh, Heartlanders were trying to get a consolation try. And then they were trying to run the ball out of their own 20. Uh, and, yeah. And I think the ball was charged down. Dead or something. But eventually they, they had a 22 minute like dropout. Hollanders, what's his name? Uh, Low was trying to do a little, like, he did a little, like, you know, tap the ball just past the 22 and scooped it up. So he tried to do, like, a trick play, and then he, he did get the ball. You know, he just tapped it over the 22, picked it up, and tried to run it out. And then he tried to throw a pass, and it was intercepted by the reserve lock uh, Sangster. Yeah, Sangster. Uh, the big lock, just big long strides down the field. Happiest man on, uh, on the field at that moment. Big palm to the fullback. Try time. 47 points to the 12. The uh, the attempt for Haalander to score one last try. Backfired on them. And uh, Harry Kane has walked away. Easy win. But yeah. Hopefully, Roy got pray to God. Only out for four to eight weeks. Just a slight knee injury. But he was screaming on the ground. Looked very painful. So hopefully it wasn't an ACL. And uh, man... Yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to check out the merch store. And thanks to anyone who donates money and supports me in the YouTube membership as well. And uh, have a good one. I'll see you guys a bit later for the Reds game. Cheers.